Hey guys, welcome back. Today we have a update on our one year old sealed ecosphere. This is a sealed jar that has not been opened. It is one year old and uh, it's completely full of plants and animals. Uh, it's a 62 ounce jar that is shaped a bit like a large beer bottle with a sealed locking lid. So right off the bat, I see some algae growth up here in the neck of the bottle. That's kind of cool. It's always interesting when you see algae growing uh, up out of the water. Uh, these could be spores, or maybe it was little bits carried up here by bladder snails. I can't say for sure. Uh, a little lower, we have a very healthy level of water meal. Uh, water meal is like duckweed, though it's a bit smaller, and I don't think it has any roots. Uh, water meal is really cool as recently some scientists were experimenting with it and they discovered that it could survive uh, between 12 and 20 times Earth's gravity. That's very important, uh, especially on something like a spaceship where you will be doing some heavy acceleration or deceleration. You'll experience quite a few g-forces there. So yeah, water meal is pretty cool and we might even take that with us into space. Uh, that's really exciting. Uh, looking a little lower in the jar, uh, you may remember that we started this jar with, uh, I believe, some grass plants, as well as some dayflower, moss, duckweed, and watermeal. It looks like the grass plants and the dayflower are completely gone, and uh, I think that's very interesting. Um, no doubt broken down, and uh, they've become food and fertilizer for the rest of the jar. The moss is thriving, and we'll look at that again in a moment. So up here at the water meal level, you will see see uh, see, see. <laughs> you will see some ostracods down below, and you'll see a few ostracods in the water meal above the surface of the water. Um, there is some water like stuck in that right there, and it looks like that because I had to shift the jar a bit when I uh, picked it up and moved it around. Uh, looking closely at this water meal level, we can see that we have quite a few tubaflex in here. Uh, these are our uh, these are our, <laughs> our tubaflex worms, and uh, this is a wild species that I captured a long time ago, and we've been just raising them here at home. Uh, but they do well in our projects, and they can apparently survive in a sealed ecosphere quite well. Uh, these guys have translucent bodies that you can see right through them, and as a result, we can see what they've been eating. It looks like they have been eating something because they have some color to them. Um, yeah, that's a good sign. So there's quite a few of them. They're eating and they must be breeding, at least in some small uh, controlled method, which is very exciting. I love our worms. You know, when I first started, like I wanted tubaflex so bad and then we got some. Uh, we even have uh, bladder snails up here above the surface of the water, uh, exploring and no doubt in search of food. There are only a few bladder snails in this jar. I've only seen two of them. And uh, that's fine. They are a bit like janitors in this case. They are not the main feature of the aquarium, though they serve the important role of uh, breaking down algae. Without them, this jar should probably be covered in green algae on the glass. Uh, the moss is a very slow-growing plant, and as a result, it's very slow to uptake nutrients and things, um, leaving a lot of food for algae to grow and to consume. Uh, the water meal helps to balance that out as it no doubt grows very quickly. Uh, you will see a few bubbles in this project. Um, at this point, one year into the sealed situation, uh, that's not going to be from the substrate. Uh, you may still get a bubble or two from your substrate, but uh, your compost or whatever you chose to include down there. Uh, but most of the bubbles that we'll see here are going to be coming off of the moss. Uh, that's producing oxygen through photosynthesis. But to forgive me if I mispronounce a few words, I did grow up with a slight speech impediment, and uh, it's uh, something I've had to deal with for most of my life. So uh, now I'm busting out the flashlight just so we can get a better look. I am still working on the lighting situation here at, uh, at the Bucket Ponds headquarters, and uh, it's very important, you know. Lighting is actually a huge part of having a YouTube channel. I can't use a ring light or anything like that because it will be reflected in the glass of these jars, which won't look very good on video. So I'm investigating getting some little, uh, little small pen-sized flashlights and some different things like that. But uh, the jar looks good, and I'm pretty thrilled with it. Imagine having this just sitting on your desk at work or uh, in the windowsill in your living room. 
just an exciting project, a little tiny world, just self-contained and thriving. So uh, this was mainly set up for ostracods, which are tiny shrimp. They are essentially shrimp. They have a little tiny clam shell. And uh, yeah, they're, they can be seen with the naked eye, though it helps to have some kind of uh, macro or a zoom lens. Although you can see them, you know, just with your naked eye, no problem. So this jar is pretty exciting for me. Um, this is a true sealed ecosphere. Excuse my quote signs there. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of people that I run into online that talk about their sealed ecospheres. And they'll talk about how they popped it open and added some new snails or something. Like, that voids the experiment, in my opinion. You know, uh, when I steal something, it remains sealed unless there's a catastrophe, you know, otherwise the project will not be opened. Uh, even our failed wine jug and uh, a few of our other projects, I've kept them sealed in the attempt to rehabilitate them, to maybe bring them back to life. It's kind of exciting, but it's something very slow that I don't have a much urge to show on the channel. But this is part three, day three of my one week of daily videos. I'm curious how you guys feel about it. Uh, I admit this video is not the best. Uh, I wanted to do a update on the sealed moss polydarium, but it was so dark inside. You know, I just don't have the lighting equipment needed to uh, really show you guys that particular video. So we'll have to wait on an update on that one for quite a while. Um, yeah, <laughs> I operate on a very low budget, and uh, yeah, it's a bit of a struggle at times, but we're having fun, and that's what matters. So this one-year-old sealed ecosystem, this world in a jar, this pond in a jar, it's doing very well. I didn't see the small tubaflex worms, the small boogie worms down there in the substrate, uh, but they were most likely disturbed when I moved the jar around to begin filming. Uh, normally I would move a jar, I'd wait a few days, you know, we come up and we'd film and observe it, but this is a daily video and I have to get it done today to bring it to you tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm doing this because uh, one day in the future, you know, I hope for this to be my career. And I want to show you guys what that would be like. You know, full-time bucket ponds. Uh, maybe you donate to the Patreon, you know, anything, even a dollar. Or you become like a member on YouTube or whatever you, way you choose to support my work. Uh, I want to give you a preview of what that would be like. You know, I'll be out here cranking videos out every day. And uh, yeah, loving it. Having a lot of fun. Remember to dust off your jars, your aquariums. They get very dusty, especially after a year of sitting on a shelf. But my name is Bucket Ponds. This is our one-year update for our Ostracod, uh, Ultimate Ostracod Ecosphere, I believe I called it. But please like, subscribe, do all the things, guys. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. And uh, leave a comment. I want to talk with you. Have a great day.